Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I give you praise and I worship you. I thank you for your grace and your mercy upon my life. Father, as I share my story with the people that you yourself have elected to listen so that you can draw them to yourself, I pray that you may speak through my lips and that your spirit may fill me to speak exactly what you want me to tell your people. Father, I pray that those that you bring to yourself, that you may keep them, you may help them you may bless them you may draw them closer and closer to you that they may have an encounter that they may know you and serve you in all honesty and in spirit and in truth we ask this through christ our lord amen hi guys good morning and welcome to another video i hope you are all doing well because I'm also doing fantastic by God's grace and mercy. In this video, I just want to have a little chat with you and I want to tell you about my walk with Christ so far. How come I am where I am today? What triggered it? Was I always like this? Did something change? That's what I want to talk about. If you are interested, please stay tuned. If this is the first time that you're seeing my face, my name is Marie Isinu Gao. Um, my father's name is Mr. Danjidi. In talking about my faith walk, um, I would it will be blunder not to mention my parents because I was brought up in a Christian Catholic home where we pray every morning. We say our rosaries, we read the Bible, we share, we have um, talks about our faith and everything. And in sickness, we trust God for healing and all, you know. So that has been my life as a little girl. And um, I've grown in that kind of environment of faith, of trusting the Lord and believing God for things and provision especially. I remember when we were small and we had we moved to Ghana and we needed a car as a family and we always used to pray for a brand new car. I didn't know what brand meant, meant or whatever. I just repeated what my parents had been praying for. Father, we pray for a brand new car in Jesus' name. And we always used to pray for that. And by God's grace, we received that. So that also stirred up something within my faith, you know, as a child. And I remember there was one time my mother was very sick and had a fever. And my father gathered us together, prayed with her water, asked her to drink it. And she regained her strength. I'm not even sure that he remembers that, but that also marked my spiritual life growing up i was not really i would not say i was dedicated or knew god in a personal way no i knew god as a family the fact that we had to go to church it was not my my own personal conviction to go to church you know i just followed the family to go to mass to go for rosary prayers to go for stations of the cross and all that i didn't really understand what it meant to walk with jesus i didn't have that personal relationship with christ no i just had a family religious ritual that we normally do but that also helped because in my walk with christ um i laid on i stood on those foundations and began to ask questions i began to question myself i began to question the things i began to research about what those things that i used to do as a child meant I remember when I was in school, I used to wake up and go to mass every morning. I used to go to mass every morning, receive communion and try to speak to God, you know, have that because at that point I was on my own. 
as in i was in school in whole for example and i had to be going to mass by myself and that really helped me to stay in christ you know even though i was doing the things without so much of a personal conviction but being in the presence of god kind of helped me to stay grounded in him you know there are many people who when they walk with christ um they either deviate go out of line um in order to find jesus again you know but for me i stayed and i thank god for that grace and i believe that it was because i was still continuing even though i didn't understand what it meant i was still continuing in that religious ritual yes of going to mass of reading the word you know even though i didn't have that personal walk what changed there was a book that my father gifted me okay so there's this book the believers authority it's a book that my father gifted me so if you can see it's from mr and mrs danjidi to plenum james maligao and isinagao yes in 2016 this book changed the course of my life because i'm somebody who really did not like reading but because my father gave me this book i told myself i'll read it i'll read it and i'll read it one line at a time and thank the holy spirit because he kept waking me up early in the morning around 4 a.m. 5 a.m. And I kept reading the book. And any time I read the book, it opened my understanding. And I now understood a lot of things. Why we are to be faithful to God. Why we are to, you know, hold our faith why we are to love jesus through kenneth hagen's personal experience with god it brought me to that understanding and if you can see anything that meant something to me i always put um you know i always put marks on them if you can see and i wasn't rushing with the book I kept reading one page at a time, one page at a time, and my faith from then, from this book, my faith has grown tremendously. So this is a book that I recommend for anyone who wants to have that serious work with God. You can also, if you want, start with this one. And as the spirit leads you, you keep going. So that is when I started that personal relationship with Jesus. But I would say that it was not that firm. You know, walking with Christ is a daily affair. And I remember having a dream once that my had died when I woke up the pain was so intense you know when you haven't lost a family member someone that is close to you you would not understand that pain that I'm talking about yes you would not I never knew that kind of pain even existed you know? so when I got up I told I said to myself wow that means that my husband who has lost who had lost um, a father then I said wow that means that he is going through so much you know and I felt that um, compassion towards him and then I kept waking up reading God's word reading because in Kenneth Hagan's books anything he says he backs it up with the word of God if you can see here you can see that there's Ephesians 
something here i don't know if it's focusing well you can see efficient you know so as you read you read the word of god you know so that also gave me confidence in god's word so i remember that pain and you know and that dream and everything then i didn't well i told my family about it we prayed about it and moved on not long after big sister if you see my face it's just that's, that's just how we look so much alike and people always confuse us as twins <laughs> sometimes when we go to the market together people are so happy to see both of us and they even dash us things thinking that we are twins <laughs> that's just by the way so i remember when my sister passed the first thing that came to me i said god she woke me up every night but didn't tell me that you are going to take my sister so I'm angry with you I'm not going to pray anymore and a subtle voice came to my heart and the Lord told me I told you do you remember that dream and I remember that dream and I just shut down i wasn't talking to him i was not accusing him again but i wasn't talking to him i stopped praying the pain was so much the pain was so much to anyone out there that has lost a family member that has lost somebody that is close to him or her may the lord console you may he wrap his hands around you and give you a hug may he shelter you may he cover you with his love and give you peace may he give you peace that peace that surpasses all understanding may the lord give you that peace in jesus name i remember one time I think even before the before the funeral I just woke up one morning took the word of God and then opened it up where my eyes gazed is I am the Lord who takes and I am the one who heals those who know who heals those who mourn yeah and i just closed it and i just knew that jesus was close by jesus was following me jesus was there it comforted me even though i was still angry but it comforted me so since then i've had dreams Sometimes during that period when I sleep and I dream, I see my sister and I'm like, whoa, girl, you are not dead and you are giving us so much stress. Why? So why did you deceive us that you are dead? And we are so stressed and everything. And then she would just be silent in the dream, watching me. Then I'll be like, oh, thank God. If you are not dead, we thank God. Uh -huh. So what's up, you know? And when I wake up, I open my eyes. I say, ah, ah, that was a dream. I kept having that dream consistently more than three times. And a friend of hers also dreamt about her. And she was telling me that she's not dead. How come? Then I kept... And this time I kept dreaming and then when I saw her again, she said, she's not dead. She's so happy that people think that she's dead, but she's not dead. She's actually alive. What does that mean? Then I remember in the scripture, I'm going to put the scripture up here. I remember in the scripture, the Lord said that if you are in Christ, you are not dead, but you live. Ah, then the dots connected. Then I realized that ah, God's word is actually true. 
So I kept paying more attention. When I go to mass, I kept paying attention to what is being read. You know, and I kept believing in the words. You know, you can go to church, the Bible is read, you understand, okay, and you know, you just listen, you listen, but you don't internalize it, you don't believe it for you, you know. So that is what the Spirit of God kept opening me up to. I kept now understanding His Word. I kept understanding and believing the words of God to be true. Then, this time, I kept waking up at dawn to read His Word. It started from Genesis. Then, I moved to books as the Spirit leads me. So, before I finished Genesis, you see that the Spirit of God will lead me to go to specific books of the Bible. And I kept reading them line by line, meditating on it. And then anything that touches me, I underline it. And then, you know, I keep pondering on His Word. And that is how my faith was growing. That is how my life, my perceptions, my ideas were changing and are still changing because we are supposed to go higher and higher. The light of God that we receive is supposed to increase daily, you know. So that is what is happening. The transformation is happening in my heart, you know. And, you know, it, it's such a beautiful journey. I began to love the Lord as a person. I began to love him as a person, not someone distant. No, I began to love him. I began to walk with him. Oh, it's such a beautiful thing to love Jesus, to walk with him. Then I now was able to relate to my father in a way that was beautiful because this is a man that has had a walk and a relationship with Christ so I started sharing my experiences with with him together with my mom and that's how we, we grew a bond of Christian fellowship anytime I read his word you know and I find something intriguing I immediately call my dad like hey daddy did you know about this do you know you know and we kept sharing you know we keep even today we keep sharing we keep you know talking about Christ and it's so beautiful it's so beautiful and I keep sharing also with friends who, who are also on that personal walk with Jesus and it's and it's, and it's such an amazing experience, you know. And that is the kind of experience and the kind of walk that I want to live for and with my children. Yes, and it's 